At the point of writing this, Dying Light has been out for exactly one week, and I think I've put enough hours into the game to make this review. Of course, this review is subjective and only reflects my personal experience with the game, which might differ for you, depending on your hardware, personal preferences, or even choices you make throughout the game's story. With that being said, I played it on PS5 with the visuals set to performance. I haven't tried the other ones out, to be honest, simply because I'm a frames per second enthusiast who usually chooses fluidity over visual quality. Anyway. Let's briefly talk about the history of Dying Light before getting into the actual game. Techland, the development team of Dying Light and Dying Light 2, released a game called Dead Island in 2011 and a spin-off named Dead Island Riptide in 2013, all under the publisher Deep Silver. The games are well known in the gaming community and have found appreciation over the years, but initially Deep Silver weren't satisfied with the critical reception of the games. With them owning the franchise, they decided to hand it over to another development team and in 2014 released the now infamous Dead Island 2 trailer that almost everybody knows. Spoiler alert, the game hasn't come out yet and probably won't ever come out. So Techland decided to make their own zombie game and we got Dying Light in 2015, which was universally way more well received than Dead Island. Now, almost exactly 7 years later, we got Dying Light 2 and I've just completed the story and a good amount of side content, so I'm ready to talk about it. By the way, there is even a hint at Dead Island in this game, which is pretty cool and you will probably only get if you've played Dead Island. But enough lore, let's get into the story of the game. I won't spoil anything as I would do in my revisiting series, so even if you haven't played the game yet and only want to know my opinion about it, just lay back and enjoy as you won't have to worry about skipping anything. I thought the story was pretty well written and makes you want to continue playing to find out what happens next and I really appreciated that the choices you make actually matter all the way to the end, which is kinda rare these days. Obviously, if you can make choices, there are going to be multiple different endings, which is cool, but in my opinion, most of the actual endings are rather unsatisfying, which, to be fair, is probably on purpose in this type of depressing game and it's at least a better option than just painting everything in the story either black or white. It's a great story all the way through. There are some good, surprising plot twists, but on the other hand, the story is sometimes stretched out just to feel longer. For example, you have a straightforward goal, which logically should be easily achievable, but then you suddenly have to help someone do something completely random before you can actually continue your mission, and this kind of stuff happens way too often for my taste. Sometimes plot points are also illogical and frustrating just to get a point across or make the player feel a certain way, which I'm not a fan of. The characters are a very strong point of this game though. Almost every major character feels unique and well written, which is matched by the good voice acting, and actually makes you build a relationship with them, which you have control over to some extent, and makes you think twice about your actions and decisions. As to not spoil anything for new players, I'm going to end the story segment of this video at this point and talk about the content of the game. So what does Dying Light 2 have to offer besides the main story? First of all, there are some really cool and deep side quests that feel like they actually matter and affect the world, as you get to know new characters that you don't have to encounter, but will be happy that you did and help them play out their story. But on the other hand, there are also a lot of generic errand type side quests that they could have left out since the game has enough content without them anyway. Somewhere in between are the side quests that aren't anything special, but at least are given some unique background story so that they're not annoyingly boring. Then another thing is the map, which is at least as good as Dying Light 1's, because it's more diverse and nicer to look at because of all the nature and different structures even though I really liked Haran as well, but I'm a fan of games that include a lot of green rather than just being grey. The map even changes slightly and helpful structures get added that either help you fight or move around, depending on which faction you assign territories to. That being said, a thing that is getting more and more boring over the years is what I call the Far Cry formula. I'm pretty sure you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. Different towers you have to climb, camps you have to clear out, crafting resources you have to loot literally everywhere you go and so on and so forth. That's not to say that this is necessarily a bad thing, but over the years, having seen it over and over again in these types of open world games, it's getting a little boring. There is a lot to do, maybe even too much, which can be overwhelming and distracting. But that might just be the goal here, I don't know. Then comes the biggest downgrade in my opinion, Nighttime. Nighttime was a lot scarier in the first game and I rarely even went outside at night. In this one it's pretty easy to avoid stronger infected and volatiles because they change the system around and yeah, just doesn't feel threatening anymore as long as you stay on rooftops and move around fast enough. Now the infected will only really chase you if you're spotted by a so-called howler, which happened to me only once outside of the story. But on the upside, there is more to explore at night than in the first game. I won't go into too much detail at this point, so let's get to one of the most important parts of this and maybe any game, the gameplay. So, this game probably has the best first person parkour mechanics to date. I've heard some complaints online saying that the parkour in this game is a downgrade compared to its predecessor, but I don't think it is. To me it's just as good, if not better than the first game. The reason I think it's probably even better is all the new moves you can unlock in the skill tree, which consistently make you feel more and more powerful. In the beginning you really need to watch your stamina, your fall height and whatnot, but after let's say 20 hours you feel like a parkour god and you can almost reach any place you want really easily, especially after unlocking the paraglider, which I don't even think was 
needed as an addition to this game. Parkour itself would have been more than sufficient, but it's alright. Fighting feels heavy and satisfying too, and dismemberment is still brutal. If you've played the first game, you know what I'm talking about. Fighting also offers a lot of unlockable skills and moves, but for the most part I stuck to the basics, because why change running system, am I right? In fact, it becomes stronger and stronger the further you progress, so you have to keep up with your skills and especially weapons and mods. The weapons you usually receive progressively either way, but it's important to actually gather the needed resources to upgrade your mods. I don't think I have to talk too much about the weapon mods, since they're a huge part of the series, so all I can say is that the different weapons and mods look cool and offer a decent amount of variety in combat. Later in the game you also unlock bows with different types of arrows, which are useful for stealthy approaches, and I actually found myself using them a lot in the later parts of the game. So now that we've talked about the gameplay, let's talk about the graphics and performance. As I said, I played through the game in performance mode, so everything I'm telling you is solely based on my experience with this setting. The environment and lighting are beautiful and the day and night changes look really good. Character models look decent, but nothing you haven't seen before. Playing this game the first week of release, obviously there were also some problems. Sometimes there was this black screen stutter where the image randomly cut out for a couple of milliseconds, mostly during cutscenes and dialogues. Then I also had a few bugs that hopefully will be fixed soon. For example, an NPC was in an area that he wasn't supposed to be in, which broke the immersion, a zombie that I had to kill to open a door spawned behind the door and I couldn't reach it so I had to reload the level by going to sleep and coming back, the same two NPC models standing next to each other and some other visual bugs like this floating NPC. I've seen online that other people had more severe bugs but I fortunately got lucky and I didn't experience anything game breaking or any crashes. Another good thing is that there are no actual loading times when entering or exiting buildings, which is pretty much an expected step standard with current gen games, but nice anyway. Another important aspect of any game is the soundtrack, so let's talk about that for a minute. The music is good and builds up tension in the right moments, such as chases or fights, but it's mostly just ambient music. There are a couple of epic songs though that are used throughout the game's story and I even have one clear favorite out of them all, which I hope I can play briefly for you without getting a copyright claim. As for the rating, some clear improvements have been made over the first game, in my opinion, as with all the new parkour skills you can unlock, and to me this was also finally a AAA release in the last couple of years that wasn't disappointing, and it's probably my favorite first person game since Metro Exodus. But as I said, this game also has its flaws, like some disappointing plot points and a couple of bugs, so all I can give it in its current state is a 7.5 out of 10. If the bugs get fixed, this is easily an 8 out of 10 to me. But either way, I still recommend you to play it, maybe just wait a couple more weeks until the bugs are fixed and make up your own mind about it. To me this is an above average game and in no way disappointing. You can have a lot of fun with it and that's what's most important to me. So as I said in the beginning of this video, this was purely my subjective opinion about Dying Light 2. Maybe you'd rate it lower, maybe you'd rate it higher preferences and experiences with the game differ widely. All I can say is that the foundation of this game is very solid and the gameplay is fun, the story is also pretty good for the most part, so just go ahead and give it a try if this video piqued your interest. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and I would greatly appreciate it if you left your opinion on this game in the comments and gave the video a thumbs up if you enjoy my content. As always, have a great day and I hope to see you guys for the next chaotic good video.